Hi, my name is Carmel Rohani and I'm an intern here at the BIC as well as one of our delegates to the Commission on Population and Development or CPD. I'm sitting here with Jeff Cameron and for those of you who may have been watching our other videos, this is the third in a series of three short videos, uh, basically a conversation about migration. The first was talking about why it's important to address migration, as well as dispelling some common misconceptions surrounding it. Our second video was just touching on the contributions migration can make to development, as well as outlining some emerging trends. And in this video, I thought it would be great to ask you, Jeff, if you can outline some new forward-thinking ways that we can use to conceptualize migration. Well, I think, I think globally and even domestically in many countries, uh, the debate on migration has, has at times been polarized between two positions. Um, on the one hand, there are those who say that you know, migration is the choice of an individual or a family um, and that, that structures, uh, institutions should accommodate their wishes to pursue opportunity abroad, whether it be a job or education or, or what have you. So there's been a view that we should liberate individuals to make choices about their lives on the one hand. And on the, on the other hand, there are those who have uh, advocated a more restrictive approach to migration that have said that you know, a really important part, aspect of society are community bonds, social bonds, the values that nations have or that communities have, uh, and that states uh, should control a movement in order to, to avoid too much disruption to, those, uh, to that social cohesion. Now, in general, when these, these perspectives have been uh, articulated in very uh, extreme or polarizing ways, it's been very difficult for, for the discourse to move forward in a productive way. And I think what we've heard at, at the Commission on Population Development has actually been quite positive and hopeful. I think we are moving beyond this, uh, this sort of impasse between these two kind of positions. Um, because clearly we need to find a way to reconcile um, the prerogatives of, of the state to, uh, to, maintain, to uh, take care of its population and to, uh, to uh, provide uh, systems and structures uh, that, that, care for the, that, in, that are put in place for the well-being of, of, the, of the citizens of that nation. Um, to balance the, those with the integrity of the community and with also the, to also providing for the freedom and initiative of the individual. Um, and you know, the, to, to suppose that these, these, three, um, these three protagonists, the individual, the institution, and the community, are somehow in opposition to each other, uh, that, has, that has stalled a lot of progress in the discourse on migration. Uh, so instead, I think it's important that we look at these three protagonists as being in a balanced relationship or the potential for them to exist in a balanced relationship with regard to migration. And not only that, but to look at the issue uh, through a lens of world solidarity. And by that I mean uh, in very concrete terms that um, many of the obstacles to migration are not just, uh, not just a de desire by countries to control their borders, but, but uh, there can sometimes be uh, fear or xenophobia um, that leads that leads uh, public opinion to oppose higher levels of migration for one reason or another. So it's important that when seeking to balance the prerogatives of the individual institutions in the community, that we also examine underlying fears and prejudices and and discrimination um, that that lie at the at sometimes at the heart of certain types of migration policies. Um, so if we look at the issue through a human development lens, through a global development lens, it opens up new opportunities for thinking about strategies whereby states can harness um, migration for the benefit for the benefit of all and to serve um, th as a means for global prosperity. So I think part of what this means is reframing the discourse away from one that focuses just on border control and on issues around security uh, to one that looks at finding the appropriate relationship between these three protagonists. I like what you say about global solidarity and it definitely echoes what we've seen as a shift in the language used at this commission with both the Secretary General and Under Secretary General of the UN calling on all the countries to try to walk a common path to meet common goals. So hopefully this will be reflected in whatever conclusion the commission comes to. Thank you so much for coming to take part in our delegation and for taking the time to shed some light on migration for all of us. And yeah, it's been great having you here. Thank you.